Hey guys, Cody here. And this is Aaron. Here with another episode of Nerdcast, brought to you by Nerdcore Comics. Today we'll be taking a few theories on how mutants will be introduced in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We are a new channel, we love it for you to help us grow, so drop a like and subscribe to Nerdcore Comics. Yeah, yeah. How you want to get into this then? Well, you want to start with theories and... Well, first off, I'm going to address the... It was confirmed. It's not going to be for a while, but Kevin Feige came out again. Hall H, whenever he did the same uh, presentation that we went over before, which is in Phase 4 Marvel, he's like, he's not even going to get into the mutants, and we're not going to talk about that till they're going to be in the latter half of... It's probably going to be like five years. But yeah. regardless, he confirmed it, so it's awesome and we can talk about it. Now, right. there's a lot of theories out there. The number one theory I'm hearing so far is that as of currently... Uh, the Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange will have the biggest impact on helping them in. And secondly, I would think that the aftermath of Endgame will play a big part into that. Uh, what are you hearing? No, I, I, I kind of heard the same thing. And, you know, like you said, based on our last convo we had, um, we were talking about how Scarlet Witch may have some, you know, um, something to do with them coming into that. And it's funny because since we started talking about that, the more I thought about it, I was like, Maybe if they went a different route, it might be a little cooler because I know they're relating to the whole uh, House of M thing about how Scarlet Witch was like, no more mutants, and she was able to get rid of the mutants. So maybe using her is going to be a way to bring them in as opposed to taking them out like they did in the comics. But I was also kind of thinking like, I don't know, I'd, I'd kind of like to see them have some precedence in the MCU prior to all the stuff that we've seen, you know, like instead of like, okay, now there's mutants in the MCU, almost like there's been like, foreshadowing and like kind of like they've been in the background the whole time like I kind of thought that approach might be cooler but again that would have to have them retcon a bunch of stuff or you know change a bunch of things and with them not coming in for I don't know like say another five years um, I don't know I kind of think it would be cooler to see that they were kind of embedded in the background that we just haven't seen them but I don't know how that would actually necessarily work I did hear a rumor about how they were now again it's just a rumor so it's speculation you know, get on your tinfoil hats. Um, but I did hear a rumor about how the Fantastic Four were going to be introduced and how they were going to be around um, since the time of the first Ant-Man, when Hank Pym was the Ant-Man, and how they just got stuck in the negative zone and that they were going to come out. Um, so that technically, although they're from his time frame, they're going to be aged and, you know, current with the current characters in the MCU. So I'm like, all right, if they did something like that, I think that would be cooler than just having like Scarlet Witch kind of like, bring them in but like you said if they did something like with how you know Endgame and Infinity War affected it like we, I think I like the uh, explanation you had last time with all the snaps that they did you know like that could have done something to people on a genetic level like I think that's cooler than having like Scarlet Witch just kind of wish them into existence or use her magic that brings them into existence and that you know this has kind of changed because that's not what we talked about last time but um, based on stuff that I've read I was kind of leaning towards that that way well I mean like a lot of this stuff is transferred from the ultimate universe. Like they pull a lot from the ultimate universe for a lot of these characters, which is cool. It's supposed to be grounded when the ultimate universe launched. They're like, Hey, what if it was Spider-Man right now? What if it was Thor right now? Like how would people react? What would they have? We're not a radiation kind of thing anymore. We're genetics. That's where they're kind of getting into. So I thought, yeah, maybe they can play the opposite. Now, if you have Scarlet Witch doing like the complete opposite, that'd be something. And I think that's a little bit stronger. Uh, but the mutants, as for them, like being introduced and like they were kind of like, hanging back, I think they're kind of doing the same thing with the Eternals. So I don't think they're going to like double up on that. I think they'll find like a more interesting way to bring them in. Um, that's a good point, actually. My theory last time, like we were talking about uh, the snaps, that's like a lot of people's theory. Because right off the bat, as soon as like the Hulk mentioned gamma radiation, you're like, okay. That means like when the snap, we're talking that was like four big snaps that like, universe shattering changing events that would like alter people on a, on a genetic level it can you know when the people were snapped back uh you've seen a lot of it um in the most recent spider-man uh far from home i think that that could be addressed like, by the people coming back they could have been altered their dna and their bodies saturated and 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 you know the gamma radiation so it could radiate him but Pulling from the Ultimate Universe, I think they, they look for a little more grounded. Like, Spider-Man's not, like, crazy overdoing it. And he has to really dial into his stuff, like, Spider-Sense. But I digress. Anyway, uh, with Wanda, she's going to be experiencing, like, I guess, like, chaos magic and all that kind of stuff. So I just hope she doesn't go on the crazy side of that and make some weird Mephisto kind of energy kids 
with like her and vision and like, Oh, it's all made up. That's just, I think it's getting way outside of things. So I think uh, mostly if I was to make a guess, I would say it'd be less about mutants in that movie and more so about love and thunder, like a mule kind of thing, or maybe pull some stuff from that. What do you think? It's funny. I, I, I agree with you. I think if they did it, you know, in relation to the snaps, I think that would resonate a little bit better. Um, but at the same time, I forget in these theories that, you know, technically, um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were supposed to be mutants, but, you know, they couldn't say mutants at the time. So, you know, maybe using her to bring them in isn't such a bad idea. I mean, at the end of the day, nothing they do is going to be a bad idea. But, you know, being that we're in speculation town, um, you know, maybe that isn't such a bad idea. It's funny because um, I was watching Captain America, the Winter Soldier last night. And at the end of that movie is when they did the introduction of Scarlet Witch and the Winter Soldier, or not the Winter Soldier, um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. And it's funny because I forget the, what was it, Baron Von Strucker, I think was the, the villain in the beginning of um, Age of Ultron that, you know, ties in to the end of that movie. Um, yeah, I think that's who it was. And they briefly kind of covered it, so it wasn't really, like, in depth. I think it was more like a toss-out character for them. Yeah, because he didn't really do too much at the end of the day. He died, He pretty much dies in the beginning of Age of Ultron or something. You know, he's, he's in the beginning of Age of Ultron, and before we see him again, he's dead. You know, they say Ultron killed him. But he called... Um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, he called them miracles. And I know like the running theme is that, that he used the, the staff to create both of them. Something about, you know, they used the, the Infinity Stone to create them. And I know that's like the running theory, but I realized in that movie, he never actually confirms that that's what he used to make them. He just said that he's created these quote unquote miracles and being that because he couldn't use the word mutants, you know? So I wonder if like in terms of, you know, miracles, like, because you said in our last episode, like, you know, for the reason like, the reason the Hulk became the Hulk wasn't just because he was a normal dude that got gamma radiation and he became the Hulk. It's like there was something inherent in him to begin with. And I think that yeah, from the uh, Celestia, that, that was the Eternals we talked about. If yeah. you're going to have kind of mutant set up, it would be more so in the Eternals movie than with Doctor Strange. I was referencing that because that was like a theory out there that if it was going to be hit on, uh, it would yeah, be more so than that. But if you know, I think you're, yeah, I think that, I think when you brought that up, like, I was like, well, you know, damn, that, that actually makes a lot of sense too, and I, and they didn't they go that direction with Spider-Man too. Eventually, that it wasn't just he got bit by a radioactive spider; that there was something inherent in him already. Oh, that are we talking about the comic book? Because that'll go off the rails with like gods and totems. Yeah, I know they're ah. a little far fetched, but I, I think like maybe maybe thinking they're going to do something like that where there's something inherent in these people. Maybe it's the gamma radiation or something that from the snap, and then Scarlet Witch is what sets that off to change that inherent. You know, I see what you're getting at, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I think what you're hitting at is like is actually a really cool thought. Okay, so we're talking about the Celestials experimented. We're talking about the Eternals. We're talking about there could be a lot of build up, obviously from the mutants, because you have Inhumans, because they're the same kind of you know nonsense. But you're talking about if the Mind Stone was kind of affected. Uh, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch to make them into mutants, you're thinking since she is a byproduct of that, she can do something similar to bring that latent ability out of everybody else that has a targeted gene coming. Okay, okay, I get it. That's that's actually really good, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, um, if nothing else, I would go with that. I could. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, obviously, if I understood what you're hitting on, like a lot of other people probably have this thought too, and it's, it's a cool thought. Um, I could go really crazy with this. And every time we talk about these theories and everything people have, people stretch it. Like, it's, it's never that crazy. Like when, once the movie finally comes out, you're like, oh, that was pretty – saw that coming, like, a little bit. But it, it, you can't get too crazy. You know, you got to be a little bit ground. But this is, you know, this is nuts. But I had this weird theory kind of like – all right, the speed force theory, I call it. So what, what was always weird to me, it was like a paradox, was like Barry Allen created the speed force. Everybody knows that. As he runs, it charges and powers the speed force and keeps it going. But the speed force technically exists before he was even born because it permeated time and space. Right. Now, the Infinity Gauntlet obviously permeated time and space. We have a time stone that literally can, you can do anything with time there, a power stone amplifying all the other powers, reality warping, everything. So I thought that by doing that, the snap could have went back and it could have affected people before this whole thing even happened so it could have played off the time stone could have pushed this wave the whole way back through time and it could have affected oh, wow. people and then i got we're going down a rabbit hole now and i'm sorry but i just want to make this quick reference to it i thought about i think the person out there that had the most kids 
and I, his name is kind of barred me even talking about, but the gang is gone. I guess like 8% of men living are like related to, or no, I'm sorry. It's like 0.5%. So it's like 16 million descendants living today yeah. from him. I think there was like 40 or 60 million mutants killed whenever the Genosha thing happened. Forgive me if I'm, if I'm wrong. I didn't like source it before this, but that's a good bit of people. So if he had that kind of influence, if that ripple effect went back through time and affected somebody like him or anybody else that had a ton of kids at a cellular level, he could have passed that gene along to so many different people that it's unreal. Yeah. So, so even, unreal. even from him, you know, he could have a late next gene and that's, that's 16 million people right there. That that's a pretty good population of mutants to be, you know, yeah. That was just a crazy theory, but that's what I kind of think that the Infinity Gauntlet permeated time and space. So you can see effects to this way before, which would kind of touch on your theory of the X-Men were already kind of there. Mutants were there. The ability was there even before any of this happened because it permeated back in time. So this could have been, it could have placed them back then. You know, Cap could, could not be the first Avenger anymore. You can go right. a million different directions with this. It's like a freaky circle. Yeah. It is a freaky circle. It's yeah. a loop, like they'd say. Yeah, no, that I and I definitely like the route you're going because then, like you said, that would give me the fact that you know this permeates through time, so it's not like, oh, you know, tomorrow we just got all of a sudden a million mutants on the, on the planet because of this one incident. It's like, no, there was something that still contributed to that beforehand, and I, like you said, because it permeates through time, like who knows where the start and end is that. Um, it was kind of inherently there all along. I like that. I like that idea. Um, I'm curious to know that besides how they get integrated into the MCU, what mutant are you most looking forward to seeing in the MCU? Um, my favorite mutants were always like, um, obviously everybody wants to see Wolverine, uh, but I liked Wolverine when I was a kid, but I also liked Spider-Man when I was a kid and you always catch, catch hell about that because like oh he's like the flagship hero you're not supposed to like it's not cool to like the flagship hero but uh yeah but back then you didn't know he was the flagship hero you know you liked him because you just liked him i want to see yeah and like i liked nightcrawler when i was a kid i thought that he was really cool i liked Iceman, and a lot of these are like you could play that off as a demon you know kind of like he is he's like kind of azazel is his father and you know so i think it'd be pretty easy but i don't think they're going to I'm just looking for a way they do this. I think they're going to go more subtle with it because like you can just have like a spring up and like, Oh, there's dudes out there. Like if Quicksilver existed, I think other people will have that, but it won't be to the extent of what mutants have, but I think they would do something more subtle. I don't know why, but professor X is one of those ones. You can't tell he's a mutant. Uh, he went a long career without people knowing he was a mutant. He was finding others kind of hard to say, but I would, I would really like to see uh, if they're bringing Wolverine into it, I guess like, maybe a good cool cameo to kind of bring him in like something to like, you know, rise the crowd, but I would bring a different mutant into it. I wouldn't go like apocalypse or somebody ancient or something like that, but right. Some, something like that. But who, no, who you you bring up a good point because then, you know, going back into the, you know, the position we were talking about before about mutants existing, you know, throughout the timeline of the MCU, you know, pre end game and post snap, um, like Wolverine, Wolverine's lived through war. He's been in the civil war. Um, I think he fought in one of the world wars, right? I'm not sure. I think he was like late, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think he was born like late 1700s. I think like people like, uh, you know, who would actually drift through time pretty well like that, like undiscovered and kind of come up later is Mystique because I think she's like almost as old as Logan. Okay. Like she was born back there too, but her genes, she, she ages differently. Like they kind of touched on that in first class, I think. Yeah, she's got a bunch of kids too. I don't know if it's, to be honest, I know the comics have changed origins a bunch but i know at least in the 90s x-men cartoon um they alluded to the fact that mystique was nightcrawler's uh mother and she was also rogue's mother and i, I know they touched on that in the comics but so much has been retconned i don't know if that still holds up to today i think this is a cartoon but i, I remember i thought i thought she was rogue's stepmother and i thought nightcrawler was one of her actual kids and it no, was no, to azazel right. yeah she was rogue's stepmother that's right I forgot. wasn't azazel in the hellfire club yeah Yep. So I don't know. I think that Mystique could be brought in pretty well. You can, you can go a lot of different routes, but if they don't use Jennifer Lawrence again. <laughs> uh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. The whole mutant and proud thing. I'm like, all right, yeah. enough. I remember her working with, you know, the Hellfire Club, working with Magneto, working with Mr. Sinister, and even working with Apocalypse. Like this whole, I'm on the X-Men team and I, I inspired them to be who they are. Like, what the hell? For real? 
Real as long as we don't get a kitty beast. Bro, he was like at a different stage of evolution where he was like a cat man. Beast, yeah. That was rough to see. Like looking at him like, Phew. so I guess I'm done with X-Men. <laughs> Just no, but uh, I think the Fantastic Four is way easier to bring in than they are. I Mutants mean, is a whole, like technically it's like a species. Uh, Fantastic Four just got like crazy powers. You can do a lot with them and the negatives, and that'd be kind of cool. Um, I just hope they do it right. You know, like I think they would touch on them before they touch on the mutants. I just yeah, I really they just want to, they deserve it. Yeah. So uh, speaking of uh, the mutants again, um, so I'm sure you heard the rumor too that, and to be honest, I can't find any validity in this, but because it goes back and forth, but you know, Namor being a mutant um, himself. And one of the first mutants, uh, not as not predating Apocalypse, but you know, being one of the earlier mutants, like oh well, yeah, yeah, he's old. He found Cap for him. like right. you know, he's yeah. yeah I, I keep hearing that um we're gonna get him maybe in Black Panther two, and maybe I don't know if they'll touch on the fact like let's uh, let's just go to Speculation Town and say that we are gonna get him. Do you think we'll just get him as Namor, or do you think they'll explain that he is quote unquote a mutant? You know, and that'll kind of lay the ground for the next couple of years to bring more mutants in. He's a lot more aggressive than Aquaman was like the, okay. Except for like, uh, like torpedo hand Aquaman. I'm sorry. It's like, it's, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. what was that? What would he have on the end of his hand? It was like, yeah, yeah. Like, or like, it was like a harpoon. He was supposed yeah, yeah. to be edgy in like 90. It was a ridiculous. Anyway, he's way more aggressive than like Aquaman is. He like, is not a fan of the upright, you know, like the, of the, the day walkers, basically, he's just not, he is for Atlantis first and foremost. And I think that obviously everybody was like, Oh, Namor, whenever they talk about an earthquake outside of like Africa under the sea and stuff like, that. Oh, okay. Namor, but him and T'Challa, they're not good. They're like, you know, enemies, like they hate each other. Yeah. And you know, for good reason. And um, I think maybe they'll do a politics kind of thing. Like they'll do a political piece. That's very heavy right now. It's very like, Politics is a huge part of like what the problem is with like American and surrounding countries and every other country actually right now. So I think like they would go in a political kind of thing, like Atlantis against, you know, Wakanda. So that's how the route I would go with it. I wouldn't just make him like, oh, he's there. I would just like I would you could do Black Panther too, like surrounding that, like encompassing that only and not even touching anybody else, because that in itself is like a huge story. Yeah. And that could uh, bring in Doctor Doom. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be sweet. I thought they were going to do that with, um, I thought it would have been cool if they did that in the first Black Panther, if they did it with his long lost cousin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I thought that would have been really sweet, but they didn't. So. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you're, you're right. I think, I think going the political route would definitely be um, dope because again, I'm s sorry to bring up uh, um, Captain America winter soldier again, but that was, that was a political thriller. And like, that's to this day, that's still one of my favorite movies in the MCU. So if they took that edge and because what else are you going to do? Cause black Panther's a King, Namor's a King, you know? So what else are you going to do in black Panther where it's not just him going against some, you know, enhanced person or someone with powers, you got to make it political because the whole thing with black Panther is he's always dealing with having to be King kind of similar to Thor, even though they don't really touch on that too much in the movies with Thor. Dude, it's kingdom and kingdom, man. Kingdom, kingdom, country and country. Yeah, exactly. If nothing else, it's like all politics, you know, and there's, there's a lot you can get into it. I mean, they kind of passed up a lot of build they could have done for that story, but how much do you want by now? But right. the child, I mean, their soul adventures, I mean, he had, in, in the last one, whenever he got into it, it was, it was really like, it was like a family problem. Now I think that since they open up their borders, all this stuff kind of happened, um, they're going to be dialing back, building up again, getting back on track. They were snapped, you know, coming up into it. And they're like, oh, they were gone. This affected it. Namor rises up, and then it turns into, like, not a family event, but a political event. Like, now their countries are at it. And I, I thought that would be the, the most logical way to go. And through that, you can trickle in the Fantastic Four and then eventually the mutants. Yeah, that's like the perfect pathway to all that stuff, actually. That's how I would like to see it, but... I don't get to pay the big bucks because I don't have a good mindset for like the Marvel has the winning recipe, you know? So that's yeah, right like Chris now, Evans. We're not getting paid any bucks. That's why we need people to subscribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Speaking of which, drop a comment and subscribe, please. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that, that about wraps it up for our, our time on, on uh, mutants in the MCU. But if you guys have some theories and you know what mutants you want to see in the MCU first and foremost, like, like Cody said, uh, drop a comment, uh, drop a like, 
and uh, let us know your thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I really want to hear everybody's theory. Uh, build on mine. Give me your own. Yours will automatically be better than mine. I guarantee it. I just want to hear them. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't answer my own question. I asked you, mutant that I'm most looking forward to be in the MCU. Uh, and that's going to have to be Dazzler. Dazzler. No, I'm totally joking. It's, it's Oh, man. I was like, phew. Way to build up and then just dump it on me. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's definitely... Definitely Cyclops, like Wolverine being the front runner, but I mean, that's everyone's, you know, front runner. So if I take Wolverine out of the equation, it would be Cyclops because I want to see him done justice in the MCU. Technically, he pulls his power from the punch dimension, so yeah. that could be kind of cool to pull from uh, the Doctor Strange. But that is another video on, on in and out of itself. So. <laughs> so yeah. So all right. Well, thanks for listening, guys, and we will check you later. Definitely take it easy.